GLP-1 analogs are a class of drugs used to treat diabetes. In this mnemonic video, we'll give you an easy way to remember all of the important facts about GLP-1 analogs so you'll be ready come test day. Welcome to the cold Alaskan seas, where you're aboard a boat on an ocean cleanup operation. You know how these crews save wildlife by scooping up trash and cleaning up oil spills? Reaching down into the pile of trash, you pick up a plastic cup. Looks like the gulp drink that you always get at convenience stores like 7-Eleven. It even has that number one drink rating printed onto the cup because it recently won a prestigious drink award. By the way, the gulp number one drink is our recurring symbol for the hormone GLP-1. GLP-1 actually stands for glucagon-like peptide 1, but this long name isn't very important to remember. What's more important to note is how this gulp number one drink is actually a knockoff imitation of the real thing. Tastes just like gulp number one, or so the advertising goes. Anyway, this imitation gulp number one drink represents how we're talking about GLP-1 analogs, since analogs are just man-made imitations of the real hormone. These drugs work by imitating the action of GLP-1. Chemically, they look very similar to the real GLP-1 hormone meaning that they bind to the same receptors to cause similar effects in the body. Now that we're anchored to the scene, let's move on to learn some key drug names you should know. To make things easier to remember, we've clustered these drug names and how they are used clinically on the left side of this picture. In addition to the trash we're taking out of the ocean, we're also here to clean up an oil spill. Yep, we're at the site of the famous Exxon oil spill, as you can tell from that Exxon Tide sign. When you mix Exxon's oil and ocean tides, you end up with an Exxon Tide, right? By the way, Exxon Tide should help you remember Exenatide, the first drug name of the GLP-1 analogs you need to know. To mourn the death of wildlife killed by the oil spill, your choir group was invited to hold a memorial ceremony. Your choir group always brings along a lyrical guide containing the words of the songs used in the ceremony. The lyrical guide should help you remember Lyraglutide, the second drug name you need to know. All right, with the drug names out of the way, let's move on to cover how these drugs are used in the clinical setting. Holding this sugary soft drink has reminded you to check your sugar. That's why you took out your sugar monitor. This sugar monitor should help you remember the treatment of diabetes mellitus, commonly known as just diabetes, since every patient with diabetes always gets a monitor to know when they need treatment, right? Recall that diabetes is a disease characterized by high blood sugar levels. GLP-1 analogs are primarily used to lower blood sugar levels, usually in the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Next, let's review how these drugs actually work. To make this easier to remember, we've clustered all these mechanisms in the middle of the scene here. As we mentioned earlier, these drugs imitate the action of GLP-1 in the body. This leads to several downstream effects, which we'll cover in order. Take a look at this crew member who is filling the boat's walls with insulation. Since you need a lot of insulation for these boats to stay warm in the Alaskan North, right? Notice how this crewman is turning on an insulation releasing machine. Recall that insulation is our recurring symbol for insulin, so this machine releasing insulation is our symbol for insulin release by the pancreas. This worker is activating the machine, representing how GLP-1 analogs stimulate insulin release. The action of this released insulin moves glucose from blood into cells, which reduces blood glucose levels to treat diabetes. What's more, notice how this machine depends on sugar to make the insulation. You know how sugar can be turned into cotton candy, which kind of looks like insulation, right? This sugar-dependent insulation release should help you remember glucose-dependent insulin release. When glucose is present, GLP-1 analogs stimulate an indirect cascade involving several other hormones that ultimately cause insulin release from the pancreas. And as we just mentioned, this released insulin then works to decrease blood glucose levels. The specifics of exactly how GLP-1 analogs cause insulin release are not very important. Instead, you just need to know that this indirect cascade maintains your body's natural feedback controls that prevent insulin release from spiraling out of control. You see, when there's not enough glucose present, GLP-1 analogs will not cause insulin release and there will not be a further decrease in blood glucose levels. So in a way, feedback controls allow GLP-1 analogs to shut off their own action to prevent blood glucose levels from falling too low. Make sense? In order to stick the insulation to the walls of the boat, you need glue, which is why the crew member has brought out a glue gun machine that releases glue guns. By the way, the glue guns here are a recurring symbol for glucagon, get it? Glue gun for glucagon. So this machine releasing glue guns represents glucagon release in the pancreas. It seems that the latest load of oily trash has splattered liquid all over this glue gun machine, causing it to break. 
you bet that the release of glue guns from the broken machine is now decreased. This decreased glue gun release represents decreased glucagon release, another mechanism of the GLP-1 analogs. To review, glucagon is a hormone that normally works to increase blood glucose levels, most notably by breaking down glycogen stores or synthesizing new glucose in the liver. So a decrease in glucagon levels caused by GLP-1 analogs works to decrease blood sugar levels. The crewman has just finished eating at the lunch stand they set up on deck. Notice how he is trying to pay for his meal by emptying coins out of a stomach-shaped fanny pack. The stomach-shaped fanny pack is our recurring symbol for the stomach. The medical term for things related to the stomach is gastric, so emptying of this stomach-shaped fanny pack should help you remember emptying of the stomach, a phenomenon also known as gastric emptying. When this guy tried to unzip the bag, the zipper broke off, so now he's having trouble emptying the bag. Notice how he has to shake it just to get a few coins out. You might even say that the emptying is decreased or delayed. After all, the coins are emptying very slowly out of the bag since the zipper is broken. This combined picture should help you remember a decrease in gastric emptying caused by the GLP-1 analogs. Put simply, these drugs work to slow the rate of food moving from your stomach into your intestines. You see, food that we eat is normally emptied from the stomach into the intestines through a process called gastric emptying. Once inside the intestines, the sugars inside food are absorbed into the blood. By decreasing gastric emptying, GLP-1 analogs reduce the amount of food that moves at a time into the intestines. This then reduces the amount of sugar absorbed at a time from food into the bloodstream. The end result is a decrease in the spike of blood sugar that occurs after eating meals. This helps to treat diabetes, since the goal was to reduce blood sugar levels. Makes sense? I did say this crewman just ate lunch, as you can tell by him rubbing his full belly. The worker rubbing his full belly represents increased satiety, another mechanism of the GLP-1 analogs, since satiety is just a fancy word for feeling full from eating, right? If you want, you can tie this increased feeling of fullness back to the decreased gastric emptying we just talked about. Less emptying of your stomach means that your stomach will naturally be more full. While some resources treat increased satiety as a side effect, we believe it's easier to think about it as a mechanism behind how this drug is supposed to function. After all, increasing the feeling of fullness works to decrease the amount of food you eat, which decreases blood sugar levels. Since less sugar eaten means less sugar in your blood. Okay, let's shift gears and touch on some key side effects of taking these drugs. We've clustered all of these side effects in this area by the chef preparing lunch. This chef was specially invited just for the expedition to help cook for the crew and the choir group. You can tell this chef isn't used to being at sea and is feeling pretty seasick. Notice how she's vomiting to the side. This vomiting should help you remember that GLP-1 analogs cause nausea and vomiting as a side effect. This increase in GLP-1 signaling caused by these drugs disrupts the normal function of the gut tract, leading to nausea and vomiting that can affect up to 50% of patients. So if your patient is starting exenatide or liraglutide to treat their diabetes, just know that you might expect to hear some complaints about nausea. Since the chef is vomiting, this left the flames she's using for cooking unattended. You can see them roaring up to cover the yellow pan in flames. By the way, this pan should help you remember the pancreas, since pan sounds like pancreas. What's more, we've even made this pan yellow in color, since the pancreas is a yellow-colored organ. The pan in flames should help you remember pancreatitis, or inflammation of the pancreas, another side effect of taking these drugs. A pan in flames for pancreatic inflammation, get it? Pancreatitis is a rare but extremely dangerous side effect of taking these drugs. Left untreated, pancreatitis can even be fatal, so be sure to rule out pancreatitis if a patient presents with severe abdominal pain shortly after starting one of these drugs. Next, notice how the chef here has loose pants and seems to even be measuring how much weight she's lost while aboard this ship. After all, you do lose a lot of weight when you vomit up everything you eat due to seasickness. This picture should help you remember that GLP-1 analogs are known to cause weight loss in patients. It can be tough to think about this as a side effect, since weight loss is often desired by patients, but it is high yield to remember which diabetes drugs cause weight gain and which ones cause weight loss, so you can be sure to give the right drug for any patient's specific weight profile. Finally, notice how there are chips near the food stand to go along with the lunches. The manufacturer of these chips even added a does not cause hypoglycemia tag to assure people that their product is safe to eat. This tag should help you remember that GLP-1 analogs generally do not cause hypoglycemia as a side effect. To review, hypoglycemia describes when blood sugar levels fall to dangerously low levels. 
To understand why hypoglycemia does not occur, think back to how GLP-1 analogs stimulate an indirect cascade to cause insulin release, which then works to reduce blood glucose levels. This indirect cascade maintains the normal feedback controls that prevents the pathway from spiraling out of control. When there's not enough glucose present, the insulin release will shut off, preventing any further lowering of blood glucose levels. This is why these drugs usually do not cause hypoglycemia. Contrast this against directly injecting insulin or giving other insulin-releasing drugs like the sulfonylureas, which work by causing the pancreas to directly dump all of its insulin into the bloodstream. Both of these mechanisms have no feedback controls to prevent things from spiraling out of control. Even when there's not enough glucose present, these drugs will continue releasing insulin, causing blood glucose levels to fall dangerously low. This results in hypoglycemia. Just like how this safety tag assures people that the food is safe, GLP-1 analogs are safer than many other diabetic drugs since they usually do not cause hypoglycemia. All right, that's all for this mnemonic. Let's review what we've learned. GLP-1 analogs are a class of drugs that include exenatide and liraglutide. These drugs are used to treat type 2 diabetes mellitus by lowering blood sugar levels. As their name suggests, these drugs work by imitating the actions of GLP-1 in the body, which stimulates glucose-dependent insulin release and decreases glucagon release. These drugs also decrease gastric emptying and increase satiety. A common side effect of these drugs is nausea and vomiting, while a much rarer side effect is pancreatitis. The GLP-1 analogs are also known to cause weight loss in patients. Finally, these drugs typically do not cause hypoglycemia in patients. And with that, we're finally done with the GLP-1 analogs. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow. I'll see you next time.